Hickok 45 here. 10 millimeter, ain't it great? Glock 29, nice little carry gun. Yeah, man. <laughs> sweet, sweet, it will get the job done. But today what we're gonna talk about is 10 millimeter liability. Is it a liability in any way? Could be a liability if you don't have a 10 millimeter. You might need the power of a 10 millimeter, right? If you're in bear country or maybe other places, who knows? So I thought we'd uh, talk about it and get your opinions, what you think. I have, uh, I guess I have an opinion. And, uh, and unlike most of my opinions, they're always correct. Maybe this one is not, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's talk about that. And first I wanna thank Bud's Gun Shop for support of the channel. Uh, great outfit, great people, just like Silencer Central, wonderful folks. They do one thing really, really well, do a high-class job of it. And then the Sonoran Desert Institute, uh, get some distance learning in lots of different areas, uh, sdi.edu, check them out. And, uh, and what I'm talking about, how about Alabama holster? Got a couple on me right now, great little Kydex concealment holsters, okay? So we appreciate the people to help us. And I just want to talk a minute about 10 millimeter. I got a couple out here. The 29, which I <laughs> haven't fired it in a while. I, I have to admit, that was the first time I had fired this gun in maybe eight or 10 years. Isn't that terrible? That's terrible. And then a Glock 20, 10. I got the FN, you know, 10 out and everything. Um, there's a conventional wisdom. I'm not sure what the percentage would be. The 10 millimeter is not the best carry gun, unless again, you're bear country or that sort of thing, uh, in terms of a handgun, all for various reasons. Uh, the main one might be that it looks bad in court if you had to defend yourself with a 10 millimeter. Uh, and if it's a entirely justifiable uh, you know, shooting, that kind of thing, uh, it would look bad possibly to the jurors and, and all that. You're carrying a 10 millimeter. Mr. Wilson, why exactly were you carrying a 10 millimeter? Were you expecting a grizzly bear to come out of the corner drugstore and attack you? So you can imagine how some anti-gun uh, district attorney or a lawyer uh, or a civil suit, just any attorney, they, they're going to use whatever they can against somebody, right? And, you know, if there's nothing they can use against you or me, they're going to do something. May, I got big ears, you know, or something. I, they're going to come up with some reason uh, that they think might help and work to get their client off or to make me look guilty of something or more guilty of something. That's the thing. It doesn't matter how macho you are or I am, we want to be and we want to carry a 44 Magnum around or whatever it is. And, and I have no problem with that, really. I think in the long run, it's, it, it probably isn't that big a deal. Um, but, but I think about the courtroom. I've read a lot of court cases and all the Masa Yibs articles and different things in the real world that happen. And you see it. You know, there's been a lot of court cases been on TV, televised lately, right? The high profile events. And you see the detail that, that the attorneys go to, go through to to try to you know, create a narrative and that sort of thing. So you can imagine it's just something to think about, isn't it? That, and that's really what we're doing. There's something to think about. Okay, something to think about. Ten millimeters, a big gun. It's a powerful gun. And uh, you know, if you're packing a ten millimeter, let me take a couple more shots with this one. Can I haven't fired this one for a little while? The Glock 20. You're packing a big old gun like this. It's hard. It's hard. And I'm sure that uh, some unscrupulous attorney could find some great footage and some great information on what the purpose of that is and how many people carry one of those in Alaska, uh, specifically for bear defense, because it is. Like one of the number one choices is this farm right here, I think. And not for hunting bears, but for just defensive purposes. And so, you know, they can use that, can't they? Uh, it's just something to think about. And, and then again, I always come back to the cartridge. Uh, well, you've got the over-penetration issue. There's things like that. 
you know, there's lots of uh, physical issues maybe related to a more powerful cartridge. Uh, may or not be an issue, of course, but uh, I think of it more in terms of, uh, of the jury. Most juries are not firearms people like many of you and, and myself, and they haven't even thought through all this kind of thing. So when a, a lawyer does a really convincing job of convincing them that this fellow was packing a 10 millimeter. Do you realize how much more powerful this is than a 380 or a nine millimeter? And they start throwing all that out and maybe they got footage of somebody shooting one into something, blowing up a car or whatever, you know. Uh, they can they can put doubt in the uh, jury, jury's mind, no doubt about that, right? So is it a liability? Again, in some areas in the wilderness, it might be a liability not to have it, but on the normal streets of America, it's something to think about at least, something to think about. And uh, what do you think? Uh, and I know there'll be people who say, I carry one, don't worry about it. And uh, I think I have carried one myself, but uh, typically I'm gonna think through what I'm talking about and I'm probably gonna go with a nine or a 40 or a 45. Uh, there aren't many police departments, I don't think, in the lower 48 that are carrying it. Uh, so there's all kinds of ammunition they can use against you, you know, in a courtroom. So what do you think? Those are pretty much my lame thoughts, and I thought I would just throw them out there today. So some of you may have never even thought about that as being an issue, but it could be. Yeah, glad you came by to hear me yak about that. Life is good. Before you leave, I want to remind you to check out our friends Talon Gun Grips and Ballastol. Talon Gun Grips have been a staple of the channel for years. As you know, they make grip tape that you can attach to the grip of your handgun or the pistol grip on your rifle. And honestly, anything you're trying to not drop and have a better handle on, right? Also Ballastol, of course. Dad's been using Ballastol since the 90s. It's been a staple on the channel as well. They make a, it's a cleaner and a lubricant. It's non-toxic, it's a great product. Anything for your guns or anything you're trying to lubricate, it's a great way to go. Thank you guys so much for watching the video.